Hi, welcome to the Ministry Journey vodcast. And today I'm going to be speaking to Evangelist Sharon Miller, who is who's a preacher. She's got healing gifts, prophetic gifts, and she ministers across the world. So welcome, Evangelist. Thank you so much, um, Sister Marcia. I am so grateful to be here. I it, it just it's just a delight. Well, Just I'm excited really. to have you here because you're the first evangelist. Okay, okay, well, thanks God. Well, thank the <laughs> you Lord. You know, it's my accents change because every time I think about evangelists, I think about American. So, like, I'm kind of going to get a bit of an American twang, twang there. Um, I remember we used to talk ages ago yes, when yes. my sister, in the early years of my yes, sister-in-law yes. and brothers uh, married, we used to kind of hook up. I can't remember where how we connected. Was it? I'll let you know. I know. All right. Sister, Sister Parallel, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, when yes. I saw that you was preaching many, many years after our, you know, us initially talking, I think that's over 20, 30 years ago. I think, whoa, look at Miss Sharon Miller. She's a preacher. <laughs> oh, and God stuff. is good. God so, is good. Yeah. So, um, and you're preaching everywhere across yes. Britain, mm. America, Canada. Africa, the Caribbean, fantastic, because it's always a blessing when you can preach the gospel. So right. tell me a little bit about how you got into ministry and how you got about preparing for ministry. Okay, okay. I'm going to kind of kind of do it in like points because I know it will take ages, but let me just say this very quickly. While growing up, while growing up, um, my mother had a, and perhaps you may remember her, um, Sister Marcy, she had a spiritual mother called um, Sister Muir, Sister Muir, and um, she was an evangelist um, back in the days, and she used to be one going around ministering the word. So my, self, my mother and her developed a really good relationship. In actual fact, my mother used to call her Mother Muir because she was her spiritual mother. Growing up in that type of environment, and there was a time where Mother Muir, she was, if it was now, she would have been called a prophet. She definitely would be, because she had a prophetic ministry. She called me, and this could have been at the age of eight. She called me, and she laid her hands on me, and she says, you are going to become an evangelist. Now, at the age of eight, you don't know what an evangelist really is, what it entails. So you don't even know. So I didn't understand it, but I I, I, I felt that this was a word that um, would come into fruition because of the woman that I remember um, Sister Muir to be. So going, going on in the years, you don't see it. You don't see how this is going to happen because, you know, after growing up in, a, in, in my, my mother, my mother is a Christian. My, my daddy wasn't. So in growing up in a home where there was a lot of trouble, domestic violence and all of that, um, when my dad died, because he was a very strict person, um, I, that's the time I used to go out and, and see what's going out there in the world. I was very unsaved, really. And so, um, you know, so you don't see how this, how this is going to happen. But one day, one day, to cut a long story short, one day, one day, as time had gone on, um, you know, leaving here, going to Jamaica, but I left here as a Christian. And I believe that's when I met you, Sister Marcia, in the earlier days when we used to fellowship and we used to go to the church in Plaster and I know Michael. So those are the days where I was saved, got saved, didn't see this evangelist thing coming, didn't know. But since then I had a lot of people coming to Plasto and also speaking. It was a pastor, Rennie, he's now in the States. He was another one that spoke. Didn't see it, didn't, it's when I went to Jamaica and that's when st things started to unfold. When I went, when I left here and went to live in Jamaica, things started to unfold. I don't know whether you want me to go on or we can come Although back. I, I, I do remember Sister Muir because yeah. she had yeah. a really great influence on my sister-in-law. And right. I do remember just admiring her from far right. because she'd right. go to Africa, you know, like yeah. one of one of yeah. those many women from the Windrush generation who oh, would just yeah. pack their suitcase and go to Africa by and themselves. Go. I used to think yeah. that used yes. to I, I really admired them for their bravery. So I do remember. Didn't know yes. that she spoke into your life. So yes. Um, yes. her prophecy is coming to pass. So tell right. me, how old was you when you kind of realized, you know what, this prophecy, this pr prophecy, yes. I need to, it's, I need to fulfill it or things started happening and you recognize, oh my gosh, the prophecy's coming to pass. 
Okay. Okay. Yes. It was. It was while I was in Jamaica. God placed me into some people's lives. I'm thinking, how comes? How did this all come about? I had a great pastor by the name of Pastor R. Scott and his wife. They've passed away now. They encouraged me a lot in ministry. Still, the evangelist thing didn't come because I didn't really start out preaching in Jamaica. It was the learning. It it was where I learned a lot. And I know that going to Jamaica was one of the best things that could have ever happened because of what I've learned spiritually and the people that God allowed me to have been around. So um, so going there and, and learning different things and culture different, well, slightly different because of the culture that we're still in, you know, it, 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 it was it was basically a lot different, but I learned so much in Jamaica. And, and there were times when I was able to attend Bible school and um, couldn't finish it because of financial um, reasons, but I was there sitting amongst all of these scholars, all of these. And so, you know, I know that God was doing something, but still I didn't see this evangelist thing come into pass and uh, had a lot of prophetic word, still didn't see it come into pass. It was when I came back here, Sister Marcia, that's when things started coming to pass. When I went to Lee Church and I was under the ministry of Bishop Simpson, oh, that's when okay. things started to unfold. Yeah. So, let, let me go back. How old was yeah. you when? Because I remember vaguely yeah. when you yeah. all decided to go to Jamaica. You was yeah. in your twenties, mid. Was it late? Yeah, it was late. It was. It was. I think it was. Was it? Was it late twenties or was it? Was it? early 30s something along the line i wasn't young 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 but i was around around that age around and how long age. did you stay in jamaica for? i would say about it, it was coming up to about nine years right okay yeah and yeah. before we go on to um you becoming ordained or whatever yeah. what what exactly did you learn under the ministry of pastor r scott because you're saying he had such a great influence. yes he did yes he did because when i because when i went when i went to jamaica i realized how broken i was because of what my man my my, my mother had gone through with my dad I didn't, it took me all those years to be able to sit and speak to someone and pour everything out. I didn't even know was there basically. And, it, and you know, so, so he became not just my pastor, but he became a very father figure, him and his wife. They, 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 you know, she was like a mother. I've got my mother and I love my mother dearly, but they, I found that there were some things that I could have shared with them that I couldn't share with my mom because it was mainly about her and what she had gone through and the effects. Right. So it was that bad? What with what? Sorry, domestic violence. Yes, on my mother. Yes, it was. Oh, no, so you, I would never have. I no, no, you wouldn't. Have. I think I think I perhaps could have met you afterwards when my dad had died. Okay. Think, well, yeah, okay. yeah. Mother Mio was the one that knew all about it. Oh, right. Okay. So yeah. So it. So that was, and that, that that would be another side of my story, which we perhaps talk about that another time, Sister Marcia. Yeah, no, that's fine. Keep but, calling me Sister Marcia. I like it. It reminds me of church back in the oh, day. No, I'm gonna call you Marcia now. <laughs> You call me Sharon. <laughs> but anyways, yes, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, we, all right, okay. So that's where it kind of all started. And so I began to converse with him, and he began to encourage me, and he began to do all what he could for me, and 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 place me doing things that I wouldn't normally do. Um, What's you know, that like preaching? Yeah. Well, well, he 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 allowed me. I would say to exhort. He allowed me to lead. Um, um, prayer meeting, praise and worship, which I couldn't even sing, but he, he put me in place. Oh, okay. kind of. So he was the one that really had helped me and encouraged me into further pushing me into where I am today. Well, now you are an ordained um, minister, like yes. I said earlier, who's preached all over the place. Yes. What, um, you've preached abroad and you've preached in the UK. What differences have you found in terms of ministering abroad compared to ministering over over here? Okay, one of the things that I've learned, as Jesus always says, a prophet is without honor, except in his own country. And I realize that sometimes when you're amongst your own, the faith isn't where it should be because oh you know it's it, it's it's Sharon Miller or it's so so and so so the the faith the faith I believe is harder to sometimes to get people where we need to be here in this country than abroad now when you minister abroad particularly in the Africas you you see supernatural things happening because that's all they have all they have is prayer many of them are coming from poor poor you know poor um, backgrounds and, and poor homes and all they have is prayer all they have is Jesus now we have the medication now we have all different types of stuff um, to kind of draw us away from God but in those countries God is just God and God alone 
no distractions, not, not too much of the internet. Yes, they have it. Not too much of the iPhone. Yes, they have it. But there's a different type of faith when you go to, particularly to the Africas, because you see things happening. People's faith seem to arise. They expect, let me give you one example, Sister Marcia, one example. I went to Kenya and I was preaching about um, the man, I think, was it the man with a withered hand, with a withered hand? Um, I think, I believe in a book, uh, St. Luke somewhere. And um, when I had finished preaching, someone literally brought someone to me. They didn't, they just came to the altar, brought the boy to me so that something will happen, so that healing will take place. That's how much they believe. That's how, right, okay. So know, the faith levels are very the faith faith levels different, different. <laughs> particularly in the Africas, the faith level is completely different. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me um, let me ask you this. You said that you started your ministry when you went back to when you went to, came back to England yeah. and you went to Lee. Yeah. How old was you when you did your first sermon in Lee? Because that's when it started. And do you remember the title of your yes, first I sermon? Yes, I do remember the title. Oh, I cannot remember how, how old I was. Uh, maybe I wasn't I wasn't 40 that I know because so I it could have been 30 something. All right, okay, um, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um I remember the first sermon that I ministered at a youth convention. I don't know how that came about, but it just, it came about because I was, because when I, um, in actual fact, let me just um, track back. I think that was, when I was in Jamaica, I used to come and go. That's, that's right. That's the missing piece. I used to come and go. So I used to come here for about a couple of months, then go back, you know, the way that you want to work to bring to ship barrel, to bring back home. So I came here, stayed with my sister. That's when I started Lee. Right. So I wasn't fully back here yet. Right. So I was over here maybe for about a couple of months. Um, I went to Lee and there was someone that wanted a minister. So they saw kind of me, I don't know how, and they asked me if I would like to be one of the speakers at the youth convention. Is that the national youth convention? No, no, this was at the a district youth convention. Okay. And then district youth convention used to be so packed. And, um, you know, because people were so hungry for the Lord. Still are, but, you know. But, um, yeah, so I, I was asked to minister and it was called um, Victory Through Christ, I think. Something like that. And I remember speaking on Moses. I remember speaking when they crossed over from the Red Sea and how they rejoice, something to that effect. Okay. So that was the first, um, that in, at Lee, that was the first um, uh, sermon that I preached. So we got you started off. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the rest from there was how I got into ministry and how oh, I was born, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I you sent me your bio and one of the things it said on it is that yeah. you also have a powerful prophetic and healing ministry mm -hmm. so which are ministries you don't really see that often now i remember maybe uh, back in the day we in the uk there used to be the albert chambers healing yes. ministry right, obviously right. people like yes. morris sorella oh, and stuff like, yes yes and stuff like that so you yes. don't really hear that much no, about no. healing and prophetic ministries no. so can you just how how have they manifested themselves um in your ministry and when did oh. you start operating in them okay um apart from the prophetic words spoken again, um, you know, I, I kind of had a, such a drive and a passion to read about the Maurice Cirillo's, the Catherine Coleman and, uh, and Amy Semple McPherson and all of these. Great uh, people from the Pentecostal people, church. From the Pentecostal <laughs> church that put up tents and was able to um, do what God. Now, one of the things that has really driven me is that a lot of people today that are saying that miracles are not for today, miracles don't happen, that ended with the apostles. And with me, I basically, everybody has their own opinion, but I refuse to believe that because I do believe that miracles are still here and still happening. So um, in, 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 in all of that, we have, uh, um, Years ago, um, it was suggested, how do we build up um, the ministry at Lee for the evening service? Because you know, sometimes evening service is less than the morning service. So there was a minister, um, Bishop Clayon Grandison. He said that time he was at Lee for a short while, while he was transitioning. Um, he said, why don't we do a healing and deliverance um, you know, service? And um, this must be going back about 20, 20, 20 odd years ago. It's got to be now, something like that. But anyway, so, so, so basically that's what we did. And I was part of that team. Then, you know, as you go along, you're kind of trying to think, no wonder I was feeling this way. No wonder 
and God has brought me into this circle because I believe God wants to do something. So um, along over the years now, over the years, I have been the one to be ministering at Lee as I was last night. Every first Sunday in the month, we have a fresh fire, healing and deliverance. This is not just, um, 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 this is not just uh, kind of restricted to Lee. Everywhere I go, it's the same thing where I see the unusual happen. Now, let me say this, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens a lot of the time where you see people being healed, people, and some healings are very progressive. Some of them are immediate. So that's where I just found out, God, this is, this is the way that he would have me to go. I wrestled with it. I wrestled with it so much. And I'm saying, God, I don't think so, but I've just given it to God and I'm saying, God, okay, I am surrendering this to you. If this is the way you would have me to go, that's where I'm going to do. So basically that's really where it started with what happened at Lee. So you have to give me some examples of healings that you've experienced in your, your ministry. Okay. Okay. Well, I, 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 I remember this also happens in the Africas. I think this is most effective in the Africas where people come expecting. And even as I spoke to you about um, women that could not conceive, and this was in South Africa, you know, there was women that can't conceive and the prayer that God would have had me to have called out and people will just tell you as it is. They don't hide it. They're not conservative like we are. They will just tell you as it is. I need this. This is not happening. X, Y, and Z. This is what I've seen. Praying for people at the altar. And the next minute you hear that they have conceived. They are pregnant. There are people today that I know, particularly in South Africa, that has become pregnant as a result of, 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 of praying over them. And I, I say this, Sister Marcia, it's really about the Lord. I see people um, that couldn't even walk straightly upright. This is at Lee. And today they're dancing. I saw the woman last night dancing her head off. She couldn't even walk up the altar. She could hardly move. And there are so many different examples. I wish I actually document them. And that's one thing that I make the mistake. I don't document them like I used to. There is people that are, I, I, the one in, 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 in Kenya where the boy could not walk and all of a sudden I see the boy begin to move. He, okay, he wasn't walking upright like he should, but the parents were so surprised because what he did then, he never done it before. I know that was a progressive healing. Um, and so, and so Sister Marcia, there are just so many others that can't, I can't, there are people that couldn't hear properly. They couldn't hear properly. And by the time the meeting was finished, they was able to hear better than what they heard before. So these things, these things, they're not in the natural. They are supernatural. And God is saying, we've just got to believe. We've just got to believe him. And it would, particularly if you're in that type of atmosphere, God is going to do it. We've just got to have that faith to believe it. Okay. Okay, so you've got a prayer and um, evangelistic ministry, prophetic ministry. What role does prayer, faith and scripture or what role has it played? Have they played in the development and growth of your ministry? Well, um, one of the things I want to put first is prayer. Prayer. I think, I think even leaving here and going to Jamaica taught me how to pray so much more. Um, while I was here, yes, we learned from each other back in the day with, with Brother Michael and Sister and Sister QP. We, in that era, we learned a whole lot. Going to Jamaica was a different level. People will pray now until tomorrow without stopping. And I just believe this was the zeal that I had. So, and, and, and this is what I have learned and developed over my life. And I can say this without prayer it's not going to work it, you're, you're going to we're, we're going to die without we're going to die without praying it's the intensity to the intensity that we pray is to the is to the intensity that god is going to work in us through the supernatural the bible says pray without ceasing and i see what paul was saying it's important it's the only way forward it's what has propelled me it's what has propelled ministry it's what has propelled people for um being delivered and healed it it, it it is all to do with prayer and that's how i found prayer studying the word of god and um, you know men ought always to pray and not to faint those 
types of scriptures, which I'm going to come to in a while. Those are the things that builds us and those are the things that drives us. Those are the things that allows God to pour into us. It's when we are in constant communication with him. So I can say it's prayer and scriptures. I can say it's faith. Let that me ask a question. Uh, yes. Um, obviously, um, people will come to your meeting sometimes to pray and you pray in yes. faith. Yes. Oh, and, and I'm talking about with regards to healing, because I know a lot of people in healing yeah. ministry experiences. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel or how do you react when you've prayed for somebody and they don't get healed? Because no. that's, yeah. that's part and parcel of what that's you do. Hard. That's hard. That's hard. I mean, let, to be honest with you, there are sometimes I come home, I'm saying, God, I'm not doing this no more. You know, it, it happens to me pretty often because you feel so deflated and so saddened to see that there are people that come to the altar that come sick and in walk with walking stick and go back with walking stick. I can't, I can't accept that. I sometimes I'm very hard on my own self. I can't accept that. But at the end of the day, Marcia, God reminds me that I'm not the one that does the healing. I'm not the one that has the final say. I am not the one that decides who would be healed and who will not be healed. I don't understand why God heals some and God don't heal some. some. I don't understand why my mother right now is feeling a whole lot of pain and suffering right now. I don't understand why God don't heal her when she's been prayed for. That I'll never understand. But there comes, there came a time when God said to me, Sharon, you are trying to understand me. Do not try to understand everything that I do. If you could understand everything that I do, I would not be God. I'm not calling you to understand me. I'm calling you to trust me. You've just got to trust me. There are people that will go through long suffering. There are people that I'm going to call home. Everybody is not going to be healed. Everyone's not going to live. And come on, I know that. But um, it's not easy when you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and the person is still not well. That's up to God. That's his prerogative. So I'm kind of stopped fighting that now. But it does discourage me even up until today because I want to see that happen. Okay. Yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Now, we know that running a ministry is a walk of faith. And um, evangelistic ministries are particularly unique, really. And I know that you're full time. So how how does that work in terms of running your ministry, um, getting support for your ministry and the kind of challenges that you face in your ministry? OK, when um, when God called me away, because, as I said, that's another story as well. When God called me out from um, working secularly, then I went to work with my church. Um, for a couple of years and then God called me out again telling me it's time to go it's time to I always knew Sister Marcia that I always knew that 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 was going to happen according to what um, the prophecy was especially from Mother Muir I, and along the journey I knew that would have happened um, but I guess I didn't know it would have happened so soon so God called me out now when I left when I left um, my place of work at Lee um, I, was, I got a lot of encouragement from my bishop, I got a lot of encouragement from him, Bishop McLeod, he's the pastor at this time, I got a lot of encouragement from him. I stepped out and I walked away, I walked away, yes I've still got my bills to pay, I've still got things that needs to be covered, but I walked away from, 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 from a, a good paying um, position to absolutely nothing, but I know that God, and it's not as if I went into it and it was all, I cried because the bills were coming in and I'm thinking, where is this going to come? I remember walking down the road somewhere and I'm thinking, this is going to come in soon. This is going to come in soon. And I do not see that finance. God, how is this going to work? You call me. And I remember I literally cried as I was walking on the road because I thought to myself, God, is this really you? But to cut a long story short, Sister Marcia, I have never, I have never missed a bill. Never. I have never gone hungry, never. I have never been short of shoes or clothes, never. I have never stopped contributing to what I need to contribute to, never. I have never stopped paying my tithes, never. I have, in fact, things seem to be a lot more better now than they was when I was working secularly. And I say this with all humility. Um, some months, 
you think, ah, but I've learned to trust God because I know he's going to come through and he does provide. There are also people that help that help and this is this is the evangelic mystic this is the evangelistic ministry not the prayer club because we don't this is the this is what i do full time and all along the journey god has always provided i have never gone without it works in such supernatural ways sometimes you look in your account and you're thinking god and that's when i know that we serve a supernatural god because you're thinking how did this get there you don't even know how but it's there so that's how i've been living and it works okay let me touch a little bit on your prayer closet ministry just yeah. talk a bit about what how that came about and how it's going right okay god came god spoke to me i think yeah 2018 it could have been even 2017 but 2018 i remember god told me that you know you need to do something you need to be starting a prayer line or do something to do with prayer well it was a prayer line because god was specific he knew what was coming so i i so I, 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 I went with the idea and I was thinking about it and I was gonna call a few people, but somehow it didn't happen. I sorry, me, um, every time you go like that, you're oh, touching sorry, the paper sorry. and it's creating a noise. You obviously think that you're preaching. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's yeah. okay, it's cool. It's, it's like, all right, sweetheart. So I'm gonna put my hand in. Yeah, so anyway, so I was, um, so, uh, we're out, okay. So yeah, I, use your hands, but every time you go like that, it touches the okay. paper and it makes a noise on the recording. Unless it's my Bible, it practice my yeah, Bible. Use the Bible. Okay. okay. Well, the Bible's got to make noise, girlfriend. It's got to <laughs> <speak>. Hallelujah! <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I was um so I was so I procrastinated for the whole year. I procrastinated for the whole year. And God came back again in 2019 and he said, You have to do this. So I went and I gave in and I went on I, I i i sorted out this this, this dial up this dial up and um, prayer line i started it off with myself and on the first morning um it was about 30 odd people that came on the first morning that was on tuesday the 14th of may 2019 that's when i first started and so um since then um i have had uh, people that came on very regularly and so these are the people that God says should be part of the team because this is going to get a bit bigger than this is going to get a slightly bigger than what it is now. I didn't or I didn't have this in my mind. All I wanted to do was pray for an hour with a few people and say amen and that was it. But God allowed me to establish a team and so we have we have about um, nine people right now on the team made up of men and women. Um, we come every Tuesday morning. Um, on dial up, but we're going to start doing it on Zoom now, um, because of the, because we get about we get about seventy to eighty, almost ninety people online, and there's so much distraction when you do dial up. So we're going to transition. So in a nutshell, that's where it all started. Prayer closet. That's where it all started. So is there anything specific that you pray about, or is it just re is it? I don't mean just, but is it a gathering for people to just pray about their needs and for God's for God's purposes to be fulfilled. What's the main aim of the prayer gathering? Right, right, the, right, the main aim. And I could see, I could see how much, basically looking at it now, I can see how much it was very much needed for the time that we are in COVID 2020. I, I see now, I mean, before I saw that people wanted this, people were able to be transparent. And um, we used to take prayer requests and people literally cried some people got healed on that line as well that's another thing some people got healed on that line because the testimonies that we're receiving people literally got healed on that line and you know people's needs we don't even pray we're kind of looking beyond ourselves and also praying for the people in the wider community and the world so it's not just about us it's also there to encourage people and god don't we need encouragement particularly what we've been through it has been like a lifeline to people particularly over covid people just ran to the line and i saw where the the, the numbers went up over that time because people needed a lifeline and thank God, God was able to give that lifeline through prayer and encouragement and worship. Okay, sounds great, sounds great. There's a lot of prayer going on. So obviously the Lord is just calling us yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to prayer and we in, we're in kind of funny, 
funny times at the moment. There's a lot of things that are happening that we don't understand. So yes. it's a time where we need to draw really, really close to God. It's, it's very apparent that you've been in ministry for several years. What's kept you going and what do you enjoy most about being in ministry, being, a, being an evangelist? Okay, okay. One thing um, that I, I, I really enjoy, you know, that's why you've got to know your calling. I, I, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, how do you do this? And when we were um, having services on Zoom, people thought that I liked it better. No, I did not like it better. With me, I think I've got traveling in my DNA. And I, 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 say, I say that people must know their calling because it's not everybody called. I'm not called to do what you, you do, Sister Marcia, and the next person. But I, I, I know my calling and I know that it is a traveling evangelist right. because how much I love travel. People say they don't like so I love airports. I love going up and down escalators. Oh, you, on oh, you love going I, up and down I escalators. Love, I, I, loved, I, I love going up, up and down escalators with my little trolley because I travel most times on my own. I love airports. I love being transitioning from one state to the other. I see, I love all of that. To me, that excites me. That's one of the things that I really enjoy going around, meeting people people doing you know taking bus um, 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 from from florida to, to to another state whatever i just love all oh, of really? it let, yeah. let me ask you a question you just said that you travel alone because normally you know yeah. if we invite somebody over from the states yeah it's normally them and a companion you yeah. like traveling abroad does that include traveling to africa as well or yeah, I mean, there, there are some places which I'm, I mean, uh, India, India has been put off so much because of COVID, but that, that, that type of place, I was going to travel with someone. So there are times when, yes, God sends you two by two. There are times, yes, but, but, but for the majority of the places I travel on my, I travel on my own. Why is that? Do you like traveling on your own? Don't you um, want to have a companion or someone to talk to, someone to carry your Bible in the service, someone to carry your bag, just company? And, um, um, do you know what? You know That's what? That's a joke about carrying your Bible. Oh, no, I know, I know. It is good. It is good to have, but you know, one of the things is, Sister Marcia, I do like my own company. I'm okay. very comfortable with being on my own. There are some places, yes, um, particularly when you go abroad, you could say, you know what, I could really do with someone. But you know, I, I need to know who there are, there, there are some people that says yes, but I need to hear from God if they, if some people are the right people, because it's not everyone that can walk this with you. It's not everyone that is able to be sensitive when you want to be quiet, when you don't want to talk, right, when you don't okay. in the hotel room, you, you, you don't have to think about the next person on their own. If someone is that sensitive and someone will say, you know what, I'm going to just leave you to do what you do, then that's fine. But at this particular moment, I like, I like it. But who knows what's going to happen in the future? I really leave that to the Lord. He's got to be the one. Okay, to let me just unpack that a little bit. When you travel abroad, say you travel to, because you've been to Africa, you've been everywhere, wherever. Yes. Yes. Does somebody normally meet you at the airport? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. And do you stay in a hotel or do you stay with a family? Most places, most places you're in a hotel. Okay. Most places you're in a hotel. But if you've got like a friend, and um, okay. you know and um, they would perhaps say you know you would you like to stay with a friend but the friend also realizes that her house you know i don't want to mess with the dynamics of the house when i'm free and when i'm trying to meditate or whatever i don't want to say shh so that's why to me hotels are a bit more right okay uh, um you know but the major the majority of times it is in houses south africa if i wanted to i could stay in a hotel but i've got some really good indian friends and their house is big enough so i tend to stay with them okay yeah um, what's the biggest crowd that you've ever spoken to because i mean obviously you've done loads of you've done you've spoken at loads of places oh, i don't know i think it's thousands i, I really okay. i really know it let has, me remind any everybody who's watching this this lady has preached across britain england the uk scotland wales canada ghana South Africa, Kenya, America. She just said she likes to go on the Greyhound bus and travel from the state. I don't know why, I don't know why she doesn't take a plane. And she's preached across the Caribbean. Yeah. Got to give you the props. That's really, that's that's amazing. That's really, really I'm good. Sorry. You know, it's all about him. So you love the traveling. I love it. You it's love, 
So you've pre you I mean I just said you must have preached and ministered to thousands over the years. Over the years, share, yes. Share yes. three instances where you feel that your or you know that your ministry had a major impact on people's lives and they've come back or you've heard the testimony. Um, someone either getting saved or getting healed. Well, or definitely, definitely. I mean, thanks be to the Lord. Definitely being saved. People that are backslidden. You know, you see, you see people crying like a baby, um, and particularly when it comes to men, you don't really see men cry as much. So when they cry, I cry. Um, you know, um, there's there was one there was one time where God asked me to. I don't know. I don't know what the number was, but I was ministering, and he says, "Okay, say it's like seven benches down, seven benches down, or, or four benches down." So I went down and I counted one bench, two bench, and people thought, "What on earth is she doing?" The thing is about the ministry that God called me into. It's quite peculiar. If God tell me to stand on my head, I'll stand. I did that. Yes, one. I saw it. I saw you. I saw it. You're very dramatic. You like Ezekiel. You, you, you like Ezekiel. You, you do. You do things that draw attention. I you know something. Uh, before I even go there, you just reminded me. When I was younger, growing up, this is before I met you. I wanted to be an actress. Ah. Oh. See where that was coming from. I mean, I was in drama, and it's not because I'm doing drama when I preach. It's just that uh. God has allowed me to use the gift that He gave me that the world didn't even want to use it right now in the body of Christ. So I'm grateful to the Lord that I'm able. So a lot of things that I do, I it's very uh, I do it with using illustration. I've always kind of been like that, and so um so I so he says one two three four bench. So I I I and then he, he would say the seventh person along or the sixth person along, and I and I, and I called out a woman that was maybe six or the seventh. I don't know, can't remember who it was. I called her out. Now she didn't tell me that she was suffering from cancer, and I believe she was about to die. She was about to die, and this was going back a while back. And I called her out, and I started praying for her. And I didn't know what it was, but all I know is that. So, so the news came back to me that she was dying. She was the, the doctor said that she has cancer and everything. And my God, do you believe that that woman was healed? She was healed that day. She was healed. She didn't even have to um, see out the, the, the cancer treatment. She was healed because God told me to do. And many times God tells you to do things that are crazy. But you just got to go with it because God knows exactly what He's doing. It may not make sense, so that's one of the ones that that really stuck out in my mind because I didn't know it was someone that I went with that told me about the woman. And if oh God, I wish I wrote a lot of it down, but that was just one that stood out before me. Was Tell me one more. That? Tell me one more. Um, one more. One more. Let me just see. Um, uh, let me let me just see. Da, 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 da. I think it was a person that, oh, I can't remember now. You've what? had loads. You what? must have had, you must have loads of testimonies. People get saved out of oh, amazing backgrounds. Definitely. People get definitely. healed. People definitely. give him prophetic words. Oh, give me one more, one more example of where God has used you and you. It's, how he's used you has helped to totally transform somebody's life or turn their life around. Um, I would say, I would say, um, this is now the salvation. This is now salvation where um, there was someone that I was ministering at a church in this country. And um, he was, he was a Christian one time. And then he turned back and no matter what happened, you know, no matter how people try to, um, you know, get him back into his faith. He wouldn't, he just wouldn't. He was a tough man, very, very resilient, very almost frightening if you saw him. Um, and I went to a church to preach one day and God, I don't know, God God would have had me to have labored, labored in, um, uh, you know, the altar call, the altar call, he, he allowed me to labor. And every time I wanted to close, he allowed me to labor in this altar call and the time was going on and I'm thinking, you know what, there is someone out there, there is someone out there that needs to come back to the Lord. And so um, all I saw was this big man coming down with tears. And as I said to you, when men cry, I cry because men don't cry as much as we do. We, they don't show their emotions as, as much as we as women. So he just burst out crying and 
he he came to the altar and he was just in tears and i didn't know and which i can't say now what he was going through at the time at when when i called him out as the holy ghost leaves the mess the problems the situations that he was in i could not even begin to tell you i don't know everything but this is what i'm hearing and right now this big strapping young man who was out there is now in in church he's doing the technical side he's doing all of that in church he's in ministry at this time that's what god did there was somebody else that came this was barbados and i'm remembering them now he came we prayed for him in a healing and deliverance and center he had diabetes it was out of the roof he went back to the doctors and the doctor says that he that the diabetes that, and everything that they said was is no longer because something has happened and his diabetes and his sugar level has come all the way back down he came back that night and he testified of what god has done god would sporadically or spontaneously tell you to pick out people that you know nothing about and they have been so many sister marcia and i'm giving god all the glory because it's him that does the healing i can imagine i can imagine there's i mean um as we know we live in an age where women are going into ministry preaching ministry evangelism ministry what three pieces of advice would you do you have for women who feel called to go into into ministry i would say um sit before god just like mary you're, you're banging on the bible again Bi i'm gonna call you a bible basher maybe it's this book i'm touching yeah i think okay, so maybe okay right i would say um to um stay at the feet of jesus sit at his feet and listen for a word from him now when i this happened in jamaica to me when god spoke to me from the book of psalm chapter 32 and verse 8 and it was so clear when god and i wish that he'd speak to me so clear like that again it was so clear he it it, it, it the verse says i will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go i will guide you with my eye that is my ministry anthem that is what i take throughout the whole ministry is that particular verse god will speak to you god will direct you accordingly just because somebody tell you that you are a prophet it doesn't mean that you just go out you need to hear from the lord and allow him to tell you who you are and what and the gifts that he's given to you that must be covered, drenched, and saturated by prayer. Stay at the feet of Jesus. When you've heard from God, arise. And you're still praying, you arise. You arise, you, and, you, and, and, and even in that prayer time, you're fasting as well, because some things can't happen apart from fasting. So you're praying and you're fasting, you're seeking the Lord. You're at that stage where you know what God's called you to do. I want you to go, not only write the vision, but I want you to run with the vision because a lot of us has got a lot of writing. We're good at writing, but we ain't doing anything with it. Run with the vision. Make sure you speak to the covering. So you are under a covering, your pastor, the spiritual, um, you, you know, as your spiritual covering, you're going to need a spiritual covering. You're going to need accountability. You can't just run out on your own and do things because we don't always get it right. I don't get it right. I've made a lot of mistakes on the way. I don't get it right but I want you to have that spiritual covering. I have my bishop. If there's anything, I'm able to go to my bishop and X, Y, and Z and get some guidance. You need that spiritual covering. You need your pastor, your spiritual covering to know where you are. Um, before we were doing the Zoom because of COVID, I used to send my bishop, and I'm gonna start that now. Now we're, we're a bit more free where I'm going to be, what Sunday, most Sundays I'm out. I want him to know where I am. I want him to know so he's able and the church to pray for me. You need that covering. Can I just ask a question there? You said that you made a lot of mistakes and yeah. women I've spoken to have all shared how they learned from their, what they would call mistakes or failures. What kind of mistakes for want of a better phrase, have you have you well, learned from? Well, one of, um, one of the prominent mistakes that I've made is running out, saying yes to everybody, and that's not the particular church you should go to. Right. Okay. 
Sometimes ministry knows about particular people on their level where I don't know, um, you know, their backgrounds and stuff. And some places, mm, maybe you should leave it for a while. Maybe you should just wait. But in the early days, I was just running out because somebody asked me, I'm saying, yes, can't do that. First, I have to seek the Lord and say, God, is this you? Then I've got to hear from someone. So I made that mistake in going somewhere where I shouldn't really have gone. It worked out well because people were saved and people were delivered, but I should have listened. I should have waited. So that bit of it, we need that covering because it's not every place that we need to run to. Right, because okay. yeah yeah so so basically that's some of the mistakes that i have made in the past so i'm trying not to make those mistakes i'm trying not to make those mistakes again i'm not going to know everything unless god reveals but i want to be more careful in where god would have me to go okay so you um, just do your due diligence now when people yeah you've you. got to i think i think it is it, it's like maturing you kind of mature in ministry when you're younger you just da, 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 you get so but now you've got to sit back and be mature and do things take things at a slower pace and listen keenly rather than just running on. Right, okay, last but not least. That's fine, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying you preaching to me because you keep calling me <laughs> Sister Master. Last but not least, what exciting plans do you have for your ministry this for the rest of the year and maybe for 2022 as God well? Have mercy. Now, there is one thing that I can't tell you, Sister Marcia, until, and it's one thing I can't tell you um, yet. I'm just waiting and I believe that I'm gonna be able to tell you the next time. That's about me personally. Um, yeah, so uh, that's about me personally. And it's not about marriage. So everybody just, it's not about marriage. <laughs> right, okay, so. Um, I was gonna say that you're getting engaged. I was gonna no, go, yay! No, 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 I would have, uh, that, that what I would have shared. If I could, I would have shared that. But, you know, in terms of me and ministry, in terms of what I do and evangelism, and um, there is something that I'm asking God for. And I'm trying to, I've done all that I can. I've done all I can. I've just got to wait on God. And I, I speak by faith. When that comes through, I'll be able to tell you. That's about me personally. And But I am just looking, I'm asking God to help me to go to the places where I've never been before. I, I don't mind working behind the scenes. I don't always have to be up front. I don't mind going, working in India. That's my passion, to be honest is to go working in places like those, working behind the scenes, going to help children, going to, 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 to help people that are less fortunate. That's what I really want to do in, with a bigger picture at the end of my, I, that's what I really want to do. Minister, yes, but I also want to teach. I also want to help. I also want to give out. I also want to feed and help the poor. That's what okay. I want to do. So maybe you might be transitioning into sort of like taking what you do to a yeah, different, yeah, different yeah, level. Yeah, 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 that's what I really desire to do. And I do believe it's just a matter of time. I guess when the world slowly opens up, God help us and all of this, I'm just praying that's where I want to go. Personally, um, it's wonderful pulpit ministry, but it's really about what you do here. It's not just about on the pulpit. It's lovely. I love it with all of my heart, but I've also got to live it and help people. I can't preach to people that are hungry. Uh, I'm talking oh, about right, okay. hungry. I need to preach to people while I'm feeding them, preach to people while I'm helping them to get a comment, okay. whatever I need to do. That's what I really desire to do. Um, in the latter- So we should look out for big things from you then. We should look out for big things from you because it just sounds like you've got you something's brewing that's that's more than just preaching and it sounds yeah, yeah, exciting. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that because I'm kind of although I, I've been wrestling, but I've got a passion. I've got a desire to do even more, even more. Not taking away from what I'm doing, but adding, enhancing to what I'm doing. I can still preach in the nighttime, still preach, but in the day I wanna be doing something to be more effective in ministry and in my life. And I, I, I don't feel satisfied. I, I don't feel as satisfied because God is pushing me, I believe, in a different direction. And mm -hmm. I've just, yeah, so, so I, it's, you know, as I said, I, not taken away from what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing, but there is something that needs to be added on. And I wanna go ahead and do this. I want to help women. I want to help children. I want to help the poor. And um, yeah, so it's about praying, but it's also about doing. Okay. Well, keep us, 
keep us posted. Yes, yes I will, definitely. So, so it's been great hearing about your ministry journey. Um, maybe we will have to have another conversation Please. when you move on and you announce this great new thing. Um, you're the first evangelist that I've had on oh. this platform. So it's exciting to hear that God oh. is using women in this way to actually preach his gospel. So thank you, thank you for spending time here sharing. It's fantastic. It's, that's, uh, can I call you, I'm, I'm still gonna call you Sister Marcia back in the days. Um, I, I love it. I love what you do. I love the impact that you are impacting women. I love your style away. I love your integrity. I love your resilience. I love the way that you encourage. So I would say to you, keep doing what you're doing because I don't think you realize how many lives that you are impacting by doing what you're doing. Certainly you, you have a great gift and it only can get better. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed it as well. And I've learned that you were act wanted to be an actress. Yes, and I, I definitely want to be an actress, but they didn't really want me. But God, oh, God, 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 did God, is, God is using those Amen. dramatic skills. Amen. Thank you so much. Really God good. bless you. Love you much. God bless you. Mm -hmm.